Thank you all so much for your comments on the last video. They were very helpful, and I'm going to implement a lot of the suggestions that you guys made. You guys suggested get rid of this board. Now, I thought that I needed uh, this board, something to do with electromagnetic fields, stuff I don't understand, uh, but I thought I needed it, but so many of you have suggested I get rid of it, so I did. It's gone. Now, it still, even after I got rid of the board, this thing still didn't work. It still didn't spot well. And through a process of elimination, I found out that it was actually this little momentary switch. Uh, for whatever reason, this guy is not letting the full current through, it's restricting it, and uh, I wasn't getting any form of spot weld at all. So that's gone. Now, when I did hook it directly up to the power cord, the actual power cord from the microwave, and I went directly to the transformer, uh, I was successful, but it takes a while. So let me show you that real quick. So now we have our hot and our neutral and we're grounded uh, to the end of this plug and I'm just going to be plugging it into this power strip and I'm going to toggle this on real quick but you'll see that the, the quick pulse doesn't actually do it. What I, I wound up having to leave it on for a second. So I'll show you guys that. Uh, right now we got nothing in here, just a piece of plastic and we'll go ahead and these are my test pieces. So I'm just going to put two of these together. So just to show you guys, when I toggle this really quick, that nothing happens. So here's really quick toggling. All right, super fast. And they just fall apart. Nothing, nothing there. All right, so let's try it again. Uh, but this time we're going to leave it on a little bit longer. All right, now as you guys saw, the electrodes actually got orange, hot, and now it did spot weld. See, they're stuck together. That's awesome. So we have a win. Uh, the trouble is that they are hot. See, I, I, I can just barely touch the metal for a second. This is going to be uh, connected to, that, to the lithium cell, so I'm worried about the heat transfer down into the lithium cell. Another common suggestion you guys had for increasing the performance of this was to use 240 volts. So I went ahead and got this appliance cord, and this is 240 volts. It has four prongs. So I replaced the ring terminals on the two hot legs with spade connectors, so it will connect right up to the transformer. Now for some of you guys overseas, you are at an advantage. You have 230 volts coming right into your normal outlets. We don't have that here in the United States. We have 120 volts, but we have two legs. So I have to combine two legs or two separate phases uh, to get me up to the 230 volts. Uh, so that's what we'll do now. We'll try this out. <laughs> but I have to move over to the other workbench behind me because that's, uh, this is a short cord. Well, here we go. So the first step is gonna be our ground. And now our two hot legs, both are 120 volts. We're just gonna slide those on the spade connectors. Now this circuit breaker, I just threw a piece of red tape on there to remind me. This is the one that I'm gonna be connecting up to. So I'm just gonna go like that, just as quick as I can, and we'll see what happens. There we go. And, and Go ahead and check this out and see if it held. All right, see the two, oh, did I, I just ruined it. They were slightly stuck together and I just ruined it uh, when I pulled them off. So not a very strong bond that has to be dialed in, but they, uh, yeah, there we go. So as you can see, it's much, much faster with the 240 volts. And you can see those little tungsten tips. The temperature of these guys. And see, I'm touching them. 
and they are way colder. Yesterday I tried doing this where I left it on for probably two seconds because I was trying to read the output voltage uh, from the secondary. And when I turned it off after maybe being on for two seconds, the primary coil, this copper coil up here, was hot to the touch. So this thing is definitely not made for the 230 volts. And uh, so it, it's, a, it's a safety violation here, guys. So don't do this at home, I guess. The first big hurdle was making sure that the transformer can successfully spot weld copper together. And it can. So great. First hurdle down. The second hurdle is fine tuning this before we actually put these electrodes on the battery itself. In order to fine tune it, I picked up a few things from Amazon. Uh, this guy here is a little uh, timer board. So there's a relay, a display, and a couple of settings here. And I should be able to set this uh, for however many milliseconds I want. And then it will close the relay for that length of time and then open the relay. Now I'm sure this particular device is nothing new for anybody. Uh, this is a solid state relay. And then I also have a heat sink for it. And I picked up this, this thing was from eBay, this little tiny thing of thermal paste. Uh, so I've never connected up anything to this and no screws came with this heat sink. So we'll just, uh, we'll make do. Okay, so here's our heat sink and our solid state relay. Uh, we need some screws for this. Let's see if this screw fits the opening. This is from the microwave. It looks like it will. Yep. Okay, so that's a good fit. Not sure. I've never used thermal paste before. So, any of you guys know the rules on how much to use? Oh, it's gone. There. The whole thing's gone. So that's how much I need to use. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's cool. They're stuck together. With that. Nice. Okay. We'll just get our screws in this. Now those things are connected. So here's a couple of small pieces of 10 gauge wire. So I'm going to throw some terminals on this. Our two wires are made up, so now one end can go to the transformer and one end will go to the 230 volt uh, cord. Now the other end of this needs to connect up to this little circuit board and to know that I'm going to have to read the instructions that came with it because I haven't checked out the instructions yet. <laughs> so I'll turn the camera off and get back to you. I'm using my 12 volt lithium battery that I've made in a previous video and I spliced on for the positive and negative and I put a little fuse holder in here uh, just for some safety and we have our uh, we have our circuit board and our solid state relay now this is on the low voltage side and on here it says 3 to 32 volts DC this guy right now is around 11.7 volts DC I think on the other end here, I put on some spade terminals so that will connect up to the 230 volt side. Uh, this guy says on here, high or low signal trigger. The low signal triggers these. And so I put a switch on here. I'm not sure if this is correct or not. Now I checked this one. There were two of these momentary switches on the microwave. The other one was bad, which I found out uh, the hard way <laughs> by it not working. This one I've checked and it's good. Uh, it has continuity when you click it. So I'm hoping that's how the low signal trigger works, but I'm not 100% sure. So let's go ahead and put the uh, fuse in. There we go. And it lit up. So that's a good sign. Now there's supposed to be a little LED indicator right here. That's going to tell us if this closes. Also, this guy has an indicator, I think, in that little circle. So two things that should tell us if it closes. Cool. Well, it turned out not to be all that difficult. There are different uh, program settings here, P1 through P7. P1 is the one that I 
think I want when after reading that. And that's the program that we're in, is program one. And right now it's set to one second. And so if I trigger this, uh, you can watch that as well as this LED. So you can see the different LEDs turn on when I press the momentary switch and that time down. Let's zoom in here. And it left it on for one second. Cool. Well, that's uh, that's exactly what I want. Now I'll change this program. Let's see here. To if I hit the stop button while this is on, that should change it. There. So now it's a tenth of a second. All right. Now let's see what happens. So it's on for a tenth of a second. So let's go ahead and hook the transformer up and see if a tenth of a second is the length of time that we need. The ground is connected. Negative doesn't get connected. One of the hot 120 volt legs gets connected there. And then it doesn't matter which one, but one of these is going to come over to the uh, solid state relay. So let's go ahead and connect this up. All right, so we are, so we've got our tungsten leads in there on the copper, pressed tightly together, and everything looks good. I'm gonna go turn the circuit breaker on, and hopefully when I turn the circuit breaker on, nothing happens. Well, I think we're good to go to try this, so let's go ahead and give it a shot. So that was a tenth of a second. Let's see if it held. Ha <laughs> ha Look at that! They're held together! Perfect! Ha! <laughs> now that broke fairly easily, but hey, we're on the right track. Let's try it again. That was awesome! Cool. Well, this time around, let's change the setting here. All right, so now we are on two tenths of a second. Let's see what happens at two tenths of a second. Ha! That was a lot of, right? Did you guys see the wires jump? <laughs> you can see the spot right there. Do you guys see that? Oh yeah, it's held on better than before, for sure. Awesome. Well, terrific. Circuit breaker's off, nothing should happen now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I feel like we finally have some success. It's a working spot welder. <laughs> the primary coil over here doesn't feel hot to me, so. Awesome, we did it twice in a row. Yep, yeah, nothing's, nothing's feeling hot. <laughs> well, I think we finally did it. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and check out my Patreon link in the description below. Thank you. Fire in the hole. Oh my lord. Fun, right? <laughs> what a sound. Scary. It's scary. Go ahead. That's solid. <laughs> I mean, you can wiggle it and pry it apart probably, but yeah. that's that's a solid connection and it yeah. won't be moving. And that was at two tenths of a sec. So go ahead and, and pry it apart. I'm not going to go open. I'm going to go yeah, side to side. Well, whatever you want. No, because go going open is too much leverage. Uh, can't. Can't. There we go. Yeah, because I cheated and I wiggled it. All right, we have a bad cell, and we are going to practice spot welding to this bus bar so we know what length of time we need for this pulse. So I've gone ahead and cleaned up this side of the cell tab. So we'll go ahead and put it in here. All right, so here we go. We'll be able to slip this in, hopefully. All 
All right, this is gonna be my first attempt to spot weld the tabs. I ground down the tips of these aluminum electrodes so I could get it in there deep enough. I'm gonna start at one tenth of a second and the circuit breaker's on, so I'm gonna hit the momentary switch and we're gonna see what happens here. All right, well let's take that apart after I throw the circuit breaker off. Oh, it didn't hold. Because it was... What? It was welded to the, um, this here. It stuck to here. Yeah. Round two on the positive tab. And this one here is uh, a silver in color tab. So this might be aluminum or nickel tab, something like that. But let's give this another shot. And I've changed this to uh, 150 milliseconds or 15 tenths. But... All right, here we go. That SSR cannot handle this. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to have to try something else here. Darn it. Uh, well, I guess an SSR can't handle the amps. Okay. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and check out the Patreon link. Thank you very much.